So campers, boys and girls, thank you very much. I'm with uh, Chris Maslin who has a relatively new practice based around free agent, yep. yep. And who's been in practice, how long have you been in practice now Chris? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Well the reality is, is that the, it is, at the end of the day it's all about do I know what I'm doing? Can I present that as an image that a client will buy into? Yep. And therefore, does location really matter? I mean, I, it's a, it's very much a leading thing, I suppose. But it seems to me that geography no longer matters. Time, distance, space is kind of it doesn't matter at all for it? me. Right. Um, I mean, as I said earlier, I've got one client in Inverness, we're very very proud of. Um, most of my clients are based in London. Yes, it's only a fifty minute train journey up to London, yeah. but you know, time is quite a valuable commodity yeah, yeah, for yeah, both yeah, me yeah. and them. So, I suppose there are quite a few people based in London who will get a train down to visit me initially sure just to check I exist I suppose and that I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. you know you're not um, a robot I'm not a robot yeah <laughs> uh, and usually they'll then go back and I possibly won't see them again right I guess a lot of these clients have only been clients but that's fundamentally years. different isn't it from the old model where you know every quarter or every year they'd make the appointment they come in sit across the desk Yep. You'd have a pointless conversation where they didn't understand what you were talking about, and you probably had not much idea what they were talking about either. I mean, that's fundamentally changed, hasn't it? I think so. Because yeah. I think back with then, you know, you're giving the client an awful lot of information in the space of an hour, yeah, uh, and they kind of get blown blown away, not in a good way. They well, blown apart. Blown apart. Yeah, by, right, they walk right, off yeah. going, "Oh, it sounds good. I'll sign." Yeah. Whereas now, I mean, I do have much more regular contact with clients, so I okay. do quite often have, you know, little emails like, "Oh, I was looking at the balance sheet on free agent. I don't quite understand what this is." You know, right. so it's. It's teaching them the basis of accountancy to some extent, and they're enjoying it. Yeah, and I, I, th I definitely think it's worthwhile for me. The to end do. user enjoying accounting. You'll see a lot of tweets about that on Twitter. You know, it's the cool way to do things. Now. <laughs> accounting is cool. Yeah. Oh come on, dude. But I think when people <laughs> when people understand how you know I put an invoice on it. Oh right, so that number goes up and that one goes okay. up. That makes sense. And you know, it's about see, meaning in the business, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they can sense. see their right. VAT liability change right. as they right. raise an invoice. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Right. Um, and that's a fundamental departure, isn't it, from the static set of numbers that you would present to a client at yeah. the end of the year or quarter where you know big piece of paper totally meaningless piece of crap really but whereas the, whereas with the live situation that they can check in check out of, yeah. it's a totally different ball game uh, and the very key thing for me is that if they understand their mm. numbers in there then they know when there's a problem right when something doesn't quite tally up right whereas you do get quite a few people who hammer loads of data in there yeah, yeah, yeah a lot yeah. of things go in the wrong place their data doesn't in any way talk with reality yeah. a lot of them are blissfully unaware of that Right. Um, which is then potentially a big problem when you go and have a look and you say, why are you showing you've got this figure here? Garbage well, in, garbage out is yeah. always the situation, isn't it? Do you find that um, the way that free agent operates um, helps clients be a little more accurate than they would otherwise be? Has, yes. it, has it made a difference, you know? Yeah, I mean, right. one of the things I was chatting with Kevin briefly earlier was things like VAT, which yep. you know, for donkey's years was 17.5%, but now right. it started going up and down. And actually keeping track of, well, hold on, which date did I send that? Um, so, you know, free agent will deal with all that for you. Okay. I think it makes things like that. That's one thing, you know, from an accuracy point of view. Uh, you know, I, I suppose if you're on, like, the cash accounting scheme with the flat rate scheme, well, which flat rate do I use? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. There's a lot of things where I'm sure a lot of people who are just doing on spreadsheets are getting this wrong. Not to big sums. Uh, the reason I asked that question is because it was it was always the accountants perceived view, professional accountants perceived view. Don't put them onto software. This is double entry bookkeeping. We spent years training on it. They'll screw it up, right? Mm -hmm. I think you're saying something slightly different here. I think free agent tries as much as it can to avoid yeah. uh, the user being exposed to the double entry book. Right. Of it. You can enter journals, but most clients won't bother. Okay. You, know, you go on it, you want to raise an invoice. You would hope that they wouldn't bother. Yeah, well, to be honest, if they do, yeah, it's starting to wonder what it's... Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they raise an invoice from it. It's very, very easy. They know exactly what an invoice is. Okay. They don't need to worry that it's doing a, you know, a debit to trade debtors and a credit to sales. Okay. They don't care. They don't need to care. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it is still very easy to put a load of rubbish onto it. Right. But with a little bit of common sense, you can get most things in the right place without any bookkeeping experience. Right.